everybody. Let me pop up the chat here. Hope you like this. I hope you have heard it because it's a completely new setup. I didn't get got any signal from the kitchen where Anya is actually. So I guess sound was okay. So welcome here for the first time at the, this Frenzel piano. And I'm really excited to share this with you. And honestly, I would have I would have loved to share this way earlier with you because it's the, the piano is here already some weeks. And there are some issues that the whole that refrained me from doing this earlier. And honestly, I'm not ready for sharing it fully with you. And I explain you why. Um, first and foremost, there were technical issues with the live stream. We were live streaming with the webcam before and YouTube changed some things and we didn't, uh, I didn't technically understood what, what was going on. So the live streams were difficult for me to handle, still are. We have changed our setting, our setup, a new camera. Thank you, patrons. And also a new um, device that converts the signal from the camera to the, to the computer. And even today we were struggling. But the main thing that I didn't share this beautiful piano with you yet is it's really hard to tune. Um, it's very stable and in the five octave range is perfect, but in the six octaves is really six octaves the high, the treble is really, really hard. And so, but I thought sharing that with you anyway, because that's part of the process. So, we're going to practice today a little bit and I didn't think about this Moonlight Sonata until an hour before the live stream. I thought it was a, such a symbol, it is such a symbolical piece for a pianoforte of this age, of this period, where you have this beautiful moderator, which is a piece of felt that's going underneath or actually on top of the hammers and you get this very soft silky sound it's, it's not easy to make sound so to even sound but this of course works magically for this piano um played from the original simrock edition journey by the way um okay i thought I'd share that with you first i have the piano closed which is something i found recently that it might be meant actually to play like this. When you open the lid, you can do it in two parts. I will make a video on the piano uh, soon uh, in a regular video. It's rather difficult to show you all things with, with the live stream setup. It should be possible now, but let's um, not push things too far today. So I will do that. So you can close the piano, obviously. Then you have one part that opens and that's actually the first position of the piano. Then you can open a second part, this, this one. It's very heavy, you lay it on top of the lid and then you can open the lid. It's made for that, so it's, it's entirely possible. But what you have then as a player is the sound of the piano really direct to you. And now this was a soft sound that I had, but the piano is compared to the clavichord it's obviously loud but certainly in the treble it has a strong treble so every tune every tone that's a little bit out of tune which happens because and i talk about that in a minute um, is directly into your face so and the balance of the piano was kind of troubling for me because it has a very strong alto tenor range, tenor range um, it has a rather strong treble and the bass is really like kind of fucked up. There's a lot of fifth sounds, so quint. But when closing the lid like this, some several things fell into place. For instance, the sound mixed rather beautifully. The issues of tuning are not as disturbing as when it's open. And on top of that, we have very heavy books, if you, as you have seen probably. We, uh, we brought over from Lawrence, it's over there, I, and it's difficult to get it with all the wires here. A very thick journey, this um, uh, Beethoven symphony transcriptions that even didn't fit on the piano because this 
is uh, this desk is really thin, really, really fragile. But when closing the piano like this, suddenly there is a support and now it's very firm. So maybe this is something that it's obvious to people who know and have much more experience with piano fortes than I have. But for me, it was a funny thing to see that closed lid sound wise and also for reason of stability for my desk works great. Okay, let me just go to the chat here very briefly. Doug is here, Charles, great, John is here. Um, hello everybody, I'm not going to read it yet. Jessica, Anya's in the chat by the way, if there's something interesting or and, and the question that you have popping up, she will notify me at the end of the live stream or during the live stream. Uh, Parlophonic, that's a new name, I guess, I think, here. Um, Brian, okay, Tom is here. Great to have you all here, Roman. Uh, Basileos, great to have you also here. Killer the Creator, great. Milan is Marcus, great to see you back. Philip Daniel, yeah, I know that the live stream has been a while. There's a na name written in Japanese, I think, that it's difficult for me to pronounce. Um, Korean name, okay, great. No idea for name, great to have you. I'm just reading your names if you're here in the chat. And I'm scrolling back. Helen is here. Let, let Daniel Zeppelin, Andre Marquez, great to have you here. And thank you for your support on Patreon. Uh, William Emmanuel, great. So have a nice time, have a great time in the chat, I would say. What we're going to do now is practicing that damn Sonata Opus 81. You were reaching out in such great number to me on in the comment section on YouTube, on Facebook, but certainly also through mail. I appreciate that a lot. And there was one main uh, question or one main idea um, that, that actually was shared by many of you, most of you, is just play that sonata again. And obviously it's 25 years ago, that moment, I still recall that. I think the teacher then, um, and for those of you not from, know what I'm talking about, I relate to my Friday video in which I expressed some personal stuff with the sonata back in the days where I, where I studied in Amsterdam, a conservatory. And that sonata really was kind of ruined by that moment where, I, where the teacher forced me to play it completely in a different way than I saw it. So different times, different generation perhaps. And so I thought you reaching out in such great numbers, why not do it together with you? And that's also actually, we could say that's the, that's the official start of the Beethoven project. The Beethoven project in which we are going to prepare the recordings that I'm going to make for the, on, on, for Beethoven, of course, on this piano, but mostly, I guess, on the new Fritz piano to come. So one word on that, if you're not, uh, if you're new here on the channel, this is a Frenzel original piano for the, around 1820. The latest, I think, 8025. It's rather old fashioned in style. And that's a piano that was given to me. First donated to me, but I actually refused to take it as a, as a gift for life because it's too precious, too valuable. It was given to me by uh, Lorenz Guardian. And Lorenz is the person who I'm doing this tempo research with. Actually, he's doing the way largest part of the research and I'm just trying to play. So that's a nice combination. And since my Fritz, that's a piano that I ordered a new, a copy of a new, uh, sorry, a new copy of an original piano for the 1816. So a little bit older than this one is not yet ready. It's in an advanced state and it will come hopefully before Christmas. He said, well, come over and bring this piano. To your place because you need it more than I do. There is a video on the channel that in which you see Lorenz actually giving me that piano. It's quite touching for me still today. And so here it is the piano and we can start practicing all of Beethoven's keyboard works in the first place with hopefully an, um, an opening to chamber music as well. It would be great 
music for four hands, two pianos we can do, we can play Beethoven concertis now with one player playing the solo part, one player playing the orchestral part. We can do lots of things with the two pianos together. They are, and that's also interesting, actually rather different instruments. You will, you will make several videos when the instruments are together. Um, in a way, the Fritz, so the older type, will sound a little bit more advanced than this one. But that's the question, what's advanced and what's not advanced? Because it's also with pianos and interpretation. Even though this is an original, it's been completely restored. The hammerheads, and I will show that in, in next uh, future videos, the hammerheads have been replaced. They were not original anymore, as with many pianofortes, changed over time to compensate for the wish of a more modern sound. So many of these early instruments have, you will find, with replaced hammerheads. This, these are restored and replaced, reconstructed in a very, very good way, perfect way, um, copied from the original, but then new leather, of course, and so you create a kind of new sound, inevitably. There is no tape recorder and from those days. So also for early period instruments, there's always a level of interpretation. Um, and so with the Fritz piano, we'll have a, a piano from the same period, from the same area, and still there will be differences, which is a great thing at those days in the 19th century that every instrument builder had his own style. And it's great. Today, we lost that a little bit in modern piano. Uh, I'm making there's a little bit of difference, but not by far not as much as in period instruments. And then we start with the recording of and the practicing of all of Beethoven. And I intend to share as much of that project with you as I can. Um, practicing like this sessions, and um, maybe even recording practicing sessions because live streams is always a little bit challenging technically, so the where I share maybe in live streams or in, in just regular uploaded videos, long sessions practicing with me, we can make short videos on very small topics that need an answer. And there will be many questions, I can tell you. Um, and at the end, of course, we have to make, we here together, I, you, a decision on how I'm going to play it, all that. It is challenging now, this piano. Okay, so. That as an introduction. Again, I will start practicing, speaking a little bit, perhaps not too much. I don't know how this develops. We had in the in the in the future and in, in the past, and Roman was pointing towards those early um, uh, periods, actually early years of the YouTube channel, where we had actually every Thursday, I believe, and the next Sunday evening, a live stream. I was recording the videos, the music videos for YouTube live together with you. The channel was only two or three thousand subs. Uh, big way we had a very small audience and many of, of you who were there still are here, so it's wonderful. And Sunday evening, we had live practicing sessions or live kind of master classes where we went through pieces. I was just playing, talking or studying and explaining what I was doing. Um, it was great, but yeah, when we will have the studio, and that's a project I will not dive into here, will be over there in another building. It's a big project, then we can level up our live streams really, because there I will have a room dedicated for music performance and practice and study and YouTube stuff 24 hours a day. So, okay. So Jonathan, I think that's true. We're going to, I, I, I hope to live stream as much of the recording sessions. We did that for the partitas, for the Bach partitas. And they will be like the Pachel Bell there, released in December, not on vinyl yet, but we'll make a video on that. So the live streams, all the recording sessions for the Pachel Bell partitas, they're hidden in a playlist and buried very deep in YouTube's basement, I guess, because, um, I made some basic mistakes there. I recorded the stuff, live streamed it, and then re-uploaded it as, uh, re as a recording. I shouldn't have done that. But if you go to the playlist, you can see all the sessions from the first till the, the last one of the recording session of the Park Partitas. And I think if you're interested in kind of see me 
play and go through the pieces unfiltered like I have recently one video with Bach that's a, a great playlist for you I think also if you are rather new here or the last year joined the channel there is for those live streams on Sunday evening so where I was practicing there is a long list of kind of live practicing sessions where I go from scratch through the complete we didn't we skipped the last two I guess uh, inventions not the inventions but the symphonias from Bach and those kind of stuff I really want to do again so the new camera is helping me a lot I will be able able to to zoom and to refocus much easier than with the webcam also the dynamic range is better okay yeah the transcriptions of the Beethoven symphonies we have a try out the 28th of November uh, with, the, with the pianist and hopefully it works and the journey transcription is a beautiful book at the end of the last year I, I can maybe make my way through those wires and show it to you okay so again I will chatting with you at the end in 30 minutes or 35 minutes when the when we are tired and sick and tired of this Beethoven sonata <laughs> Okay, what I will do is start with, uh, playing the Adagio and then we, we go through to the Allegro. I haven't prepared this, I should say, it's 25 years ago and I will go through the piece very slowly as if I'm discovering the piece new with you. And we'll see where we get. Um, in future live streams, that's the last thing I will be saying, we will, I will try to make series in which you know upfront what we're going to do so either practicing and just me reflecting on the stuff that otherwise I would be only thinking if that's of interest of you and we can have also live streams where your questions and your chats pop up right next to me so that we can interact really closely mixing those two formats is really hard because focusing on practicing and reading your questions and then formulating everything into English it would be all, all already difficult in Dutch but that's something that it would interrupt the live stream I think too much so there are two formats so that's coming future weeks or months so just stay tuned a lot is going to, to change on the channel so the Allegro I'm going to practice really slow I was just planning to play the Adagio in a tempo of journey of Moshe's and see where we come up. So Czerny gives three numbers and that's, you have to see this, and over a period of 30 years, Czerny was really busy, these tonatas kept him busy, so he reworked his own process, he want, and so he delivered four different editions actually. The Simrock I was playing is the last one. And so we have metronome numbers that sometimes are exactly the same and sometimes differ a little bit and that's an interesting process process most of it is much more steady in its metronome numbers so we have 63 66 72 of journey and 72 76 of Moshley's so we could say we'll go for the 72 that's the normally I will see in the Allegro I don't practice like this but for an adagio since I will make also a video on that that's confusing for some people if I go to the Beethoven Sonata, the Pathetic on Clavichord, which is one of my pop most few uh, videos on YouTube, then you'll see that the middle section is not in double beat. But when playing while playing the Munich Sonatas, they're of Mozart, they're also on the channel, check them out. Those are the pieces where I got this switch that the slow movements probably also were double beat. And from that moment on, I stopped thinking about it because it's very fatiguing just uh, skipping from double beat single beat would it be single beat would it be double beat so I just skipped the thought process because for many cases only double beat for me made sense and so I said to myself well then let's draw this line and try everything and it's a kind of liberating when you do that I'm not saying that all problems have been solved and we will come back and view the videos on the problems too but for an adagio, that was my point, I sometimes take the metronome arc just as a starting point because sometimes it's also for me still surprising the tempo since I'm not used to them yet. Okay, 72 is my date of birth, so it will be a perfect tempo, I guess.
Okay, so I think that is for me a normal tempo. If you've never heard this piece, I guess this is a very logical tempo. The other uh, single beat would be double this, double of this. And this is a piece written by Beethoven on the departure of um, the Archduke. It's written here, Rudolf, uh, 1809. And Rudolf was a very important patron for him. He uh, composed this piece for him. <laughs> recognize and a uh, random Beethoven sonata here and he also dedicated his good Fusten sonatas to him which is his opus one composed at age 11 or 13 is a little bit mystery on the date and Beethoven assistant insisted on having an opus number for those sonatas which apparently and they are rather interesting to play okay the adagio was side reading and it's not so hard to play so there the flexibility of movement still needs to come so playing in tempo is not and i, I read that a lot in the comments that also for the chopin scherzo if the his students or his pupils write that you should, you should have a steady tempo they don't mean that you should have a metronomically steady tempo so you have, but you have a kind of line a zero line where you sometimes go over a little bit and go under a little bit but not too much and so this constant fluctuation little fluctuation little fluctuation is something else than, se than suddenly pulling the handbrake because 22 notes have to be played in one beat so that's another thing that kind of rubato you can apply that but then the composer indicates that the the very subtle rubato playing is something that at the time uh, was and actually in all music is always done there is also if you play Bach there's always a little bit of fluctuation and that needs to come also here interesting for me I mean, not interesting but what I do often with such adagios this is okay but sometimes you have the feeling it's really slow and certainly if you're used to another tempo you just take your metronome and you play along with it and it's really helpful what happens then is that you start counting in the smallest note value and actually also Czerny is suggesting that in his piano school that in adagios and graves you 
you there are pieces where it's handy with where, where it's nice to, to to count in 16 notes even okay there we go there we there we go to the allegro i played very slowly first it's really a long time for me to rediscover also the harmonies okay a lot of difficulties already <laughs> first of all pedaling if, if you are in the if you at, at the time when i was in conservatory but i guess it's still the same today you learn to learn you learn to play this piece like this um, depressing the pedal here going up down up down down releasing the pedal and then pedaling all the time but actually beethoven doesn't write any pedal marking now that's a difficult topic i'm far from ready with this because if you see only this piece here how on earth to play the top line legato without using the pedal and without that's the second difficulty without finger substitution now i don't have the simrock edition for this sonata which is the, the last the last journey edition Cherny added in that edition a lot of fingerings. So there might be the edition which, and it's this, this one I've played from that. Um, where is the book? Oh, here. There's, there's some, several of those. So that's the edition where he added, so to say, the most of his own vision on top of the score of Beethoven. And his fingerings are really interesting and challenging because there are very few finger substitutions so where you change finger on the same note that is something that we today do all the time and also i did in beethoven and in chopin the same thing uh, chopin's fingering he was very meticulous in following that but if you combine that the same problem is there if you combine that with his pedal marks, which also for him as for Beethoven, they both were very, very severe on his pedal mark, the pedal markings, then you come across problems or challenges. And that's interesting because you can skip that easily. I mean, just playing finger substitutions, almost all players today do that. Early music play performers or kind of mainstream performers, they all have finger substitutions all the time but if you don't do that you hit your face to a wall really hard and then you have to start rethinking a lot on top of that the pedal markings that you cannot use here and those two combined those two elements only they have an immense influence also on tempo and apart from the debate that ding single beat double beat you need just more time to make this. So the legato will, if this is correct, your fingering, you have to go with your fifth finger from the F to the G. You can only suggest a kind of legato by releasing your wrist, by, by pulling your wrist higher and releasing the, the G very gentle. If you want to rush, you get an accent that you don't get legato at all. You have to forget the lower voices to be completely legato. And I don't think that they meant to play it like that. Um, there is here a pencil line by my teacher, which suggests also those legato, but I think they were fine with releasing those very gently. You see, I do it. I substitute his finger automatically, but I shouldn't. Okay, let's try that. And by the way, you will hear the tuning of the piano is far from perfect. There are some thirds are really too big and it doesn't feel right to me. Hence the reason that we only now share this in the live stream with you and not yet your uh, official recording. Um, I'm not done with the, with the temperament. Temperament is okay. I know what I want, but I'm not 
done with the, with the tuning of this piano. So that's a learning process. So we, again, all these harmonic changes. I remember this was for me very, cha very challenging because there's so much information. G major, it's, it's, it's our passing through harmony. If I play it like this, it sounds almost like Chopin. time Beethoven was and that's my impression if you take the tempi that I think are historically closer to what he believed then this his music becomes harmonically so progressive you feel it but this is really tough really tough in terms of there's so much happening also releasing this E flat to the D it's so much easier if I just depress the pedal here. Don't do it, then I have to make the sound with my fingers only. So I'm releasing the E flat to the D, but then legato, please. Well, it's two bars and already so much to be discovered here. So this is a Schenker edition. He gives one and no, I wouldn't do that anyway. I don't know how you hear this, but I hear a kind of horse. Because that's a very tricky place that comes. So that might be a nice. If I would practice this totally on my own, then I would say, well, when this might be a good starting point for a tempo. This feels right. I mean, that's totally unscientific, but that's the way I work around these tempi. I also follow my intuition first. That's so important. And as I said in that video last Wednesday, I believe, if you just deal with this in a way that you, well, as I said at the beginning of the live stream, just take a perspective, be it double beat or single beat, take single beat as a, as a starting point where you just go through lots of pieces and see where you come up with, then the problem will be very fast, very clear. But if you then say, well, let's just play according to double beat like I do, then you don't have to think about this anymore. And then there's a kind of feeling that develops. So we will see where we come up with, with tempo here. If that's, if that's correct, sometimes I miss the bow completely. So. But this feels right. Maybe even to just tune the piano but it's so hard to tune because you have a, a string that is relatively 
very short compared to later pianos like the Gerard, also with the clavichord, those instruments, and of course the clavichord doesn't have a sixth octave, is so short that even when your tuning hammer falls uh, to the front or to the back, it's enough to give the string a little pulse and change in tuning. The tuning block and the tuning pins, pins are very rigid, so it doesn't, it's not that the piano is that tunable anymore, it's just the nature of the design. With this remark that the Fritz piano, and Joris did a long time before he decided, that's part of the reason why it's delayed. He had his mind going over very, very um, many decision uh, um, moments, like for instance the strings. Here is Malcolm Rose, there are rather rigid, heavy, not heavy, but strong strings, so you will, you will not break them easily. They have a lot of reserve if you tune up. The, 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 the strings that, have, that are used now on the Fritz, they have a much less reserve. So reserve is not the right word. They have much less margin, that's the word in English. So as with the clavichord, if you would tune up on the Fritz, so the new one, one quarter of a tone, the, snap, the, the, the string will snap. Here, it's not the case. But on the Fritz, so the string tension internally of the string will be much higher relatively compared to this piano. And so it might be that the strings that are on the Fritz lead to a more, when the string tension internally is much higher, you have, when you tune, more is changing in the string so it's more rigid rigid when the string goes in over the bridge on the on those pins they will hold more firmly than perhaps this piano and it might be an idea if that works out with the flits to change replace the strings on this piano as well but that's for much this future but this tuning is terrible <laughs> here is a very dry sound. These pianos are really dry. I mean, this is... That's what you often hear with a lot of pedal. That's, this goes in one, one uh, direction to, to this. But now without pedal, and Beethoven writes these stich marks, these dashes, which means the same thing probably as a dot. And generally you will find only one place, I guess, if I, I'm right, where he makes a slight distinction between a dot and, and, and so a dash, but overall the meaning is the same as a staccato note. for a very long time, in this case 25 years, is just to follow 100% your motoric feeling. Because sometimes you will see that your motorics, your feel, motorical feeling is just telling you which notes to, uh, to, to, to play next. But let's try, very slow. If you can play it slow, the only thing you need to do is speed it up here. That's the key of playing fast. Of course you have to practice, but you're practicing your brain more than your fingers. I have a keyboard course, links is in the description that talks about that. I, I, it should be, I should rename it as how to practice fast. It's by practicing fast here more than here, regardless of which tempo you want to play. Just the input. That needs to be good. In this case, of course, I have played it long ago, but that's um, I'm cheating a little bit because I it's somewhere still there. But I do feel that this is the limit of what the tempo should be. saying that it is the limit I'm just saying it I'm feeling it as a limit so let's try this limitation that I feel now from the beginning
tune the octaves. They're quite okay. Actually, a normal alla breve. And maybe it should be played like this. It's allegro, so typically you would have the alla breve uh, schlag, which is 60, around 60 uh, for the half note. You should, the allegro makes it a little bit livelier. So going up to, I don't know. But the complexity of the harmonies, they are counterpart, counterweight to that. So, um, as for now, I don't think we should go for a very fast allegro beat. Let's just try the heavy one. <laughs> Transfer the weight, this little circular movement. by the way but I mean this this is line we have to I have to think about how playing this it would be so much easier like this but you feel if you have if you don't add a lot of pedal and on a modern piano it's really hard not to do because also the guitar that that instrument really screams for a little bit more pedal but if you don't do it you suddenly will feel on such an instrument adding the pedal completely brings you into another world so it's it's a, it's, an, it's a device it's a tool that you have to be careful using too much and honestly i'm far from really understanding how how they thought in this <laughs> to hold those notes but how long I think just the length of the quarter note that's my first idea and then you have this bows which is a legato bow but also means that the end of the bow you should play a little bit shorter so it's not he wants to avoid that it's like a child springing the, I mean, um, from joy. We say the in Dutch, but I really don't know what that's in English. And you will have an accent on those notes. There's no way to escape from that. And he, which is weird because in this, this is a really alabrete, so you have no 16th note. But the harmonic the harmonic changes are a little bit faster than you would expect, but here, instead of having 
only an accent on one and three, he has a clear accent on four, which is also an indicator that you slow down the tempo from the normal tempo uh, um, um, ordinario. It not necessarily has to be, has to mean that, but it's, it's an indication. <laughs> but short. That's something that it was so important in those days and I will share with you in future weeks and months some some things that will, will blow you from a chair written by Beethoven and on, on accentuation and what the impact is in playing sometimes even thinking as a kind of inequality so but also here dun, ta, dun, ta, dun. They really, we, we learned in conservatory to play scales, well, not too, man, too much scales, unfortunately, but to play them really without accentuation. That's totally the opposite of what Czerny wants you to do. For Beethoven writes in the grammar etudes and some, some other places, accent with all the accent mark, the bar actually, that's what they want. Um, that, that changes your music so much when you just do that. But again, that's a field of performance practice where, well, you have some notice of that and with clavicle playing is it's different. But here, it's so different. And I also here need to dive my way deeper and in trying to understand what this accentuation was for those people. We do a lot of things, I think, naturally, but there is an important part that we today just skip, I think, and even um, on purpose, skip. Singers do that much more till than we do. trick in such a line which by the way is not simple in double beat it's way more complicated perhaps in single beat uh, if you can reach double of this tempo anyway but what's more easy in single beat if you just play it way faster I'm not going to do this now because I need to practice that that's obviously but if you miss a note with the use of the pedal um, nobody will hear that if you miss a note in this tempo uh, with all those notes very articulated without pedal yeah, there's nothing to hide. So what's what's the more complicated? What's the more difficult? That's sometimes something you can ask yourself. But the trick is just to hold a little bit in the middle. So here you have, to, you know, for yeah, you have to practice this in a way that you can feel the notes. It's it's going too fast. Also in double beat, we'll check the tempo in a minute. Um, to really um, consciously think about every note and then you come here you get a little bit home then you build in little islands where you wait a little bit and a little bit longer than you might do otherwise and often that is also in the writing so it helps you to interpret it to work so to say I think it is great in this kind of tempo that you have it's also very um, uh, detailed written so accentuation or just um, 
Staccato tom, pedal tom, pedal tom, pedal tom. If Beethoven writes this dash on every, there might be a dot because Schenker is not Schenker is not really consistent with that. So on the high notes, tom, 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 tom. But yeah, if you play it much faster, then there is not so much else you can do than play that note very short. But those are little tempo indicators, indicators as well. here which is not indicated but I have this line going up like this and then that's this theme of the sonata it's a nice contrast oh, Beethoven was a great composer actually already develops uh, because now the long notes here they worked really well there was a kind of nice atmosphere I think and that those are for me the moments where I say well yeah the things start and you will recognize that things start things start uh, to circle around somewhere here and if you wake up at night th those are little doors that go open and you see you're still practicing that but you don't know the doors back uh, um, you close the door back and, and, and but it continues and that's nice if I have such feelings I say well here things fall on, on their place I I'm happy those are little moments of joy because I know the piece will develop let us check this tempo and then I go to your to the chat if you have something to ask and again we will come back to the piano so don't worry um, in future live streams and also um, with the patrons we have monthly hangouts where you uh, also have a video um, call in with me uh, at the piano or the clavichord so that might be something for you and that's great support of the channel by the way um, the tempo G. I'm around 58 for the half note, which is very close to 60 for the other breathe. Um, and that's faster than Moshele's, is 108. So in double beat, my tempo would be now 116. Jenny has 112, 116 and 126. So, so Jenny goes faster. I'm spot on what Jenny writes in the middle and a little bit above what he I think writes in his piano photo school and most is a little bit slower. So if you still have some patience with this piece, let's try Moshe's tempo, that's the slowest. Might work great. And also you will notice that the character will be different. There's no way that it's a, it's a slight tempo decrease, but in this region, and that's my experience when you are around a certain zenith, you know, the quote-unquote original tempo, that's my feeling, then the slight differences that you make have a huge impact. So the tempo of motions, he makes it more majestic.
intent and check my tempo normally again because it, I will have sped up, there's no doubt about it. You, you, you will be attracted to the tempo that you had in mind when you had that moment of where everything comes together. That tempo will be your, 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 horizontal, your horizon point for a long time. If you want to change that, it's difficult. So, So, I see it's 6 o'clock here in Belgium, uh -huh. let's uh, go here to the computer and let me see what you have to say about this. So, it's again, all suggestions and all ideas for future live streams are welcome. We, I think, on having a regular live stream on Sunday evening, since that's typically the time where kids have to go to bed certainly the youngest and around a little later than now in the evening uh, practice on my clavichord because practicing here when Evelyn goes to bed it's out of question it's too loud and it would be nice for me to have live practicing sessions with you because the clavichord we need to rebalance things and uh, well, obviously I spent a lot of time here on the piano but I kind of miss the clavichord often sometimes I go back and it's just so so nice to be there again it's such a perfect instrument actually um okay so just being at my computer here and i should have a view on your yeah here it is great to read that see that you had a great time in the chat that's actually a lot such live streams are and i haven't realized that but um I, there is a channel on YouTube that, and it's, it's, it's I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not sharing that because just, you would say, Wim, are you listening to that music? But it has a kind of relaxing piano music, you know, what kind of stuff it is. And that's something that I can listen to on the background. You know, sometimes it's, it's kind of, I mean, after a while you get really bored hearing that the same harmonic changes again, but in some way it, it, it it, it makes you feel a little bit more comfortable as a live stream for 24 hours and people are just going into the chat I think to meet each other and that's a great thing perhaps also here and maybe an idea in the future with the studio is to have Tuesday live streams where just the live stream is on the whole day and I come in and I practice and I don't know a lot of things are possible um, so just going through your chat here, the latest, last things. Yeah, Adventure and Lutri says, uh, oh yeah, oh, it's great to have lute players here. After every new recording of yours, I go back and listen to a mainstream performance. Now this seems so comically fast. That's typically a reaction all of you will have if you just stick to it a week or two, then there is no way back. Once you have felt the power 
of and and the performance must i mean there are also in double beat it's, for me you will hear a lot of performances that are really not just good enough i'm going to drink a little bit and so as with fast performances you can play boring either fast playing fast or slower but if it's spot on it's difficult to return to a faster performance um Sarah has a question on double beat. Yeah, I'm going to use your question, Sarah. Tom writes more cantabile at motionless tempo. Yeah. And so I'm discovering this now together with you. My camera is really high, I see. I should fix that next time. But anyway, that's the great thing about taking those metronome numbers seriously because there are actually the actual tempo indications. Motionless play this sonata in according to that metronome number. You can double it if you want. But well, I believe in this tempo. And so you reconstruct this tempo. How cool is that? And it gives such small details of difference, but those small differences, those small details, they are huge actually. And so that's another great thing of playing in these tempi. Small things get huge. And so if you play it in 100, in 108, you have a different piece than playing this in 116. I guarantee you, if you could play this in, the, in single beat, dum, 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 it doesn't matter. Playing a little bit faster. I mean, differences are there, flatten out. So, yeah. Okay, Sarah asks, if a piece marked is presto, what tempo in beats per minute, minute would you play at it? Well, that's a, that's a difficult question to answer because it all comes down to the notation. And as we saw in the Chopin scale, so that's actually literally would be 300 beats a minute um kulak's tempo in double beat it's 150 but that's a really open structure where chopin is also using a kind of a waltz tempo so that's that's difficult if you go to we had a comparison video with two uh, prestos Cherny gave 132 i think for, for this sonata <laughs> And 152 for the quarter notes. Um, I think so. So that's way slower. But the structure is more complex. Then you have prestissimos who are really, really slow. Like for instance, this I cannot play. So the 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 next movement of the. Uh, or the middle of the presto movement, prestissimo even, presto movement of the Moonlight Sonata. That's by Czerny 88 for the quarter note. Uh, and honestly, sometimes, also for me, these prestos feel rather slow, like... Feel slow if you say prestissimo as fast as you can, but you have. I think that's just the idea that I have. That if you have a prestissimo, um, and certainly a prestissimo where you say, "Well, that's the fastest tempo." I see it as the fastest tempo within the limitations of that notation, and that makes sense. It's like saying, "Well, you and you, you, you're approaching a village, and here in Belgium or in Flanders, and." southern part of Belgium is different we are we are a very complicated uh, country here but anyway in Flanders you are uh, you can only drive 30 kilometers an hour in, uh, in, in, in in the centers of villages where are schools so if I say you can drive as fast as you are allowed here in, in Flanders that's actually 30 kilometers an hour in such places so um, I cannot answer your question really um, to a detailed level where I, can, where I could say, well, it starts here and it ends there. Honestly, I need more research to, to do my research myself on this. I'm going to do that. Um, but again, it's faster than an Allegro, presto certainly, but not necessarily way faster than an Allegro. As an Allegro, I'm just giving you these points as a starting point. Also an allegro, like here, 
journey and I refer a lot to journey because his, his piano school is really awesome you should read that Hummel also but journey is detailed in a way that's actually remarkable that he's it's changing but for a long time it's not regarded as the source for early 19th century piano playing but anyway he gives I believe 12 definitions for the term allegro starting with ruhig which means very calm and he ends with lively and I don't know from memory so you have to be careful to saying presto is this uh, Quantz writes I believe presto is a little bit faster than allegro so it depends but Honestly, that's something I need to look and in, dive into much deeper. Um, Melanie Marcus says, Clavichord has a really light accent, but it's Spanish, and yes, but the pianoforte also, though it's not so light on the violin. You really have to well, press rather hard to make sound. And with the journey Opus 299, that's coming by the way, but I, I'm, I'm not playing it now because, you know, I'm going... It's so horrible. But I do play it's, yeah, it's Opus 299 a lot. Uh, no. Actually, only the first part because the other parts I don't have. And this is a first edition, by the way. It's beautiful. It's an original Diabelli edition. 18, 39 something. Or, or I don't know something like that um, okay just reading your chat now Martin writes although I'm not 100% convinced by the double beat theory I think you're doing important work single beat is clearly not conv convincing either that's great to read and that's such a normal reaction. I had that feeling for a long time too. I mean, you don't, you're not born with the double beat ID in your head. I mean, imagine this, the video that was, was going out on Friday, where I shared that story where my teacher was so, what do you say that in English, blunt? I mean, not very sensitive to what a young musician things and he, he, of course he should have asked me the question what's your um, uh, how do you come to this tempo and let's see how it works how it balances out and see if we come in the piece in your tempo in your vision to certain discrepancies so starting from what I felt like was necessary was 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 right of course he didn't do that because when you go through the piece like that there is that there is no discrepancy there is no passage where um, things done don't work so but obviously we all are born in our time and so that you have doubts that's that's it's for sure and there is not a letter by beethoven answering our questions and by the way if if, if there were a, if there was a letter from beethoven they say hey guys my metronome marks you have to read them not as you are doing in the 20th century but like we did so taking two ticks in one a note value in the metronome equation instead of two even if he had written the letter for sure we would have ignored the information because the metronome was broken um, i mean it's it's something you have to reconstruct from within the context and there was a great comment made on one of the latest videos and i actually asked if i could use it for a separate video there will be a video of 40 seconds seconds where he wrote, wrote, well, actually, the question is very simple. If a metronome number was an accurate number, and I think we all agree on that, because otherwise it would not be a discussion, then even if there is one piece or a handful of pieces, I mean, he, he, he pushed the argument to the limits, that is impossible in single beat, then the discussion is over. There is no other solution. And that's my point of departure for a long time. The theory is totally secondary to the practice and that's what sometimes uh, well kind of frustrates me as is, is, yeah kind of frustrates me but certainly irritates me that there are people who and I understand that it has to do with fear more than with arguments it's no logic here then that start saying well it's all nonsense it's obviously nonsense 
but without playing the stuff. That's the thing that you would need to do. You play the pieces, you play it, you have hundreds of metronome numbers that simply aren't impossible. And if you can play the Schuller der Glaufe card, 15 notes a second, then I'll give you an etude with 22 notes a second. And if you can play that, I give you an etude with 27 notes a second, but because they exist. And so we have to come to common ground where we say, well, there is a problem. As some timings like George Smart, that's maybe not the best example, but they they go towards single beat as Milchmeier. Really, that's that's a difficulty. We have made a video on that. So uh, Milchmeier Piano Forte School gives timings for beginning students playing in 300 beats uh, horn, uh, horn pieces. So -pop 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 -pop. it's impossible to play. So there we have the same problem, but that's a theoretical problem. The outcome is the same also with the timings that George Smart gave. Well, it's ridiculously fast. And so, yeah, I can imagine that you need time to accept the fact that there is a difference. But you will not find, well, some sources you will find, I will, I, I will bring those on the channel soon, that are really concrete, talking about double beat. But they lived in their time, you know. Um, if we say today, um, I've spent a day with a friend, and if I, say that, if I say that to you, you will not, you will automatically say, well, that's a maximum of 12 hours. That's a day. That's a part of the day, actually. But if I say I've spent three days in Germany, you automatically will say it's three times 24 hours. So the same term, day and day, two different meanings. One time the day is a part of the day as a counterbalance to the night. So also there you have these two the, uh, binary unity that together form a day. 24 hours and so you don't you will not find a really clear explanation other than one source i've shared that already in a live stream at Vergeux, i make a separate video on that where he says well the metronome equation obviously the metronome number the note value in the metronome number is obviously not the same length as the note that note value in the piece one quarter note is two eight notes the ticks and that's that's a remarkable clear uh, uh, source on double B but other than that it's uh, but we will come with the source of, of Lucy that's a great source okay um, <laughs> don't write my family will not let me play quick uh, quickly anymore. yeah I know we have regular email conversation it's great it's great to read your emails uh, Tom and also your comments and doc as well <coughs> Okay. Yeah, I have a lot of videos on double beats and some playlists. And um, there is, I think, also a playlist in the comment section of in the description box of this live stream. So new to double beat start here. And again, I have to make a series on basic understandings of notation because that's probably more important than double beat or metronome numbers Num metronome numbers are so interesting because they are fixed they are fixed in time how cool is that we can fix the 138 beethoven head with this hammer clavier sonata that's a fourth dimension that's almost as good as a cd recording well it's a lot of information so we better work with that okay guys thank you so much for being here um the live streams will come back more regularly but give me some time to reinvent the scan the, the channel a little bit also we come back with with clavichord videos with videos talking on basic keyboard techniques and I should remove the word basic at maybe elementary basic basic uh, elementary techniques is better like the movements of the wrist we will make dedicated videos on this piano compare that with the Irar perhaps uh, do all kinds of cool stuff I think um, but again today I'm going to a complete transition period also with my regular work as organ consultant where projects are changing and we need to level up things and change things so i hope that's fine with you and as always i thank you all for being here i thank my patrons 
for supporting me on Patreon. We have now today 87 patrons on patreon.com. There's a link in the description box. And that's really awesome. This new camera is literally made possible by the patrons. And um, so if you have a moment of time and check that out, I really appreciate that a lot because it's the backbone of what we do. Um, just just reading now some questions that people are uh, Greg asks in my opinion list understood tempo in double beat yeah I think so and there are very little metronome numbers by list that the metronome lost of lost in the latest 19th century of interest is because people were speeding up and were not paying attention to those metronome numbers anyway I will, will bring the cool story of Raul Puno the um, student of Matthias student of Chopin you will not believe what you read there and that's those those quotes i will not give it here some of you will know those quotes actually they are as Lorenz said they are factums which means you have to find an answer to that if you want and i'm just giving you a sign now then uh, there's someone who asked a lot of, about the action so okay can you tell about the questions about the action of the piano yeah i will do that so the factor means that's a given fact where if you want to change the outcome of that factum you need to explain that in a different way otherwise all the solutions based on that cannot only be understood like that so we have several of those um then we come back to that but list um, is there's no doubt about it I, I think yeah flight of the bumblebee that's something I cannot give you an answer to but that's of course a showpiece today I've not gone into uh, Tchaikovsky and all those late 19th century Russian pianists and composers but most probably there are double beat i mean if there are metronomes for i don't know yeah the action i was asking to 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 the action um and if you have specific questions just type them now um martin my clavicord suggestions are bach fugue and polonaise yes the, the Wilhelm freedom and bach polonaise are on my long list for a long time Scalati Sonatas. I know you ask. I think you ask it a few times. We have two now. Oh man, I, I would have love to have some more time. And it's also one of the things in the future. Just play a little bit more. Um, the action on the piano. And if you have specific questions to that. Schmushy or heavy. Oh my God. Explain that in English. Um, would like to hear your take on the, the OK 565 on organs. Yeah. Simrock edition, yes. Oh, I would love to have the complete edition, but it's not on IMSLP. It's not scanned by Google. Can you imagine this? Some of them are. The original ones are very hard to find. And I had some. Not too many and it's the, isn't this a sign i mean this is the ultimate perhaps well you have to combine all editions by Czerny, by carl Czerny, an extremely gifted musician beethoven's best student who his whole life stood in this regarding beethoven editions in the sign of making beethoven sonatas more understood for the public don't make a mistake Beethoven was almost forgotten after his that small circles it's Liszt who brought the Hamid Lavier to Paris I mean um, things like that and then this edition is not available I, unless I'm wrong uh, the action of the piano and then then we're closing this because it's seven six thirty <laughs> um, dinner time here um, yeah, I'm going to explain that. It's certainly not solving all of your problems. If you think that on the Viennese pianoforte, and this is an original one, 
this has actually one of the more advanced actions if you compare that compare that to Mozart's piano this is way more advanced and way more nuanced but still if you compare this action to my Erar well it has the advantage of being lighter for sure so if you want to play a skip it will help you in playing that faster but not in a way that you cannot do on the Erar so but the downside of this action and it certainly has is you have to release the note completely in order to make sound again so just playing trills is really difficult so this is okay but then going with an upper note you have to articulate the notes very carefully in order not to miss one and it's really ugly when you miss one um, so light yes but not light in the sense the clavichord is the clavichord is i think only 12 grams i don't know how much this is this is considerably more heavy than the clavichord having said said that the clavichord requires you to play with more arm weight than this piano does you can use arm weight but uh, it's not in a way the piano says no to sounds to to attacks that are way too hard so so you really hurt the piano you hear that so also then next the shape of the keys it's shorter than the era it's much more shorter than the strangling the shape of the upper notes the black keys and you, you don't see that is very um, small at the top and then it goes like this rather um, i don't know what you call that so if you play octaves you see that you hit the notes and you hit the uh, white keys as well it's not the era is way better in this in holding the notes and holding and, and giving your fingers a kind of um nice landing plate so play so to say for playing octaves this is kind of awkward you know? we play the Hamid Lavier or other pieces by Chopin or, or Etudes and show you that so light yes but not in the sense that it again will will save you from playing and, and will make you be able to play those journey of 15 notes a second because it's very light up here, and here. you hear that if I play just in the bass as fast as here I'm going to do it on my right the bass notes really need some more time than in the treble which is of course a normal thing but here it becomes heavy in a way that it resembles the Iraq because here it is very light then another thing is that this action doesn't allow you to make the uh, dynamic changes that you easily can make on the Erar. Uh, the Erar has this double action mechanic, so you can repeat the notes are more, more easy, but even on a later action than this, on the French piano, you will have, um, I don't know technically why, but you will have more space and more room in creating and shaping the sound. Here the action, the the, the moment where you hit the key resulting in hitting the, the hammer hitting the string is really fast it's like a clavichord it's almost instantaneously in on the on the era it's there is more i would say room in between depressing the key and the sound on the steinway on the modern piano that's even that space is even bigger but it allows you to make a more dynamic range so doesn't make it more easy to play i think it's really hard to play these pianos yeah. i hope that's as a first introduction 
Um, yeah. Yeah, Robert, my, my piano is not still in tune. It's, I, I'm tuning a lot. And not saying I'm an, an experienced piano tuner, but here are, I tune myself. The clavichord, obviously, I would, but the clavichord is, is really easy to tune, um, I think, compared to a piano. But this one is really hard. So, um, Tom, you feel the hammer return? No, you're not. The hammer is not in your finger. On the era, the hammer is in your finger here. You have to release the keys completely and play it again. It's actually, I think, Andreas, Andreas, Andreas Stein, so the instrument builder, wrote a book on piano. Was it he who wrote that Beethoven suggested to play not with the finger on the key, but a little bit above the key? And you understand when you play here, which is bad practice, actually. <laughs> but then you make sure that you have a sound all the way through. Then, when you combine it with the with the uh, the so the left pedal going from three to two, the 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 hammer has difficulties in making sound. So you have to really be very firm in your attack. And I don't know exactly why that is. And by the way, the Fritz will have three. Uh, so normal action, then due corde and una corde as well. So that's an additional, an added feature on that piano. So we'll have two pedals, one if you depress that, two strings, and another if you depress that, one string as Beethoven wants you to have. Then the moderato, that's really hard to play. So the moderato adds a little piece of felt underneath, up on top of the hammer. Loud. It gives an effect that only on these pianos is possible. Um, okay. Doc said I missed and could not find your Chopin Wednesday follow up for the last discussion. Um, probably there is no, none. So. Um, on Wednesday, I will share with you a remarkable score as a follow-up of the Grazia score a few weeks ago. And again, I'm planning to reinvent the schedule a little bit, dedicating more time to that those Wednesday, Wednesday videos, like you know, when we talked about the use of the, the description, the use of metronome, probably by Melzer, the 1816 instructions, how Chopin played Bach. Uh, all those videos. There is a long video waiting script actually waiting for Czerny Opus 500 and the way Czerny used this metronome. Um, but I want to level up those videos in quality, giving you some more, I wouldn't say professional look because I'm far from a professional video editor. I would love to know more about video editing, but a little bit more dynamic. I don't know. We'll see how this develops. And then on Separate from that, very short videos just sharing with you very specific topics without other explanations, just giving it to you. Some personal behind the scenes stuff, I mean doubts that I have and things that led to a certain situation, um, those kinds of things. So, but overall, of, in a few months, we should land to a kind of new way, look to the channel. Hope to be able to do that. Okay, now I think Anya is calling me from the kitchen and well, I have to go. I'm lucky. I'm blessed to have dinner now. So she's a great wife. I mean, we're so happy with our little family. And my kids are up to, in their rooms. As Evelyn is watching YouTube movies, I guess, on our tablet and she won't complain for food, but uh, Sophie definitely is, he's 13 and is always hungry. So thanks for watching guys again, thanks for your support on Patreon and um, we'll see you soon again for another live stream or for a regular video. Bye!